Chapter 2 Sources of Corporate Finance Question 6 Justify the following statements 4 marks each 1. Equity shareholders are real owners and controllers of company Answer 1. Equity shares are those shares which do not have any preferential right in regard to payment of dividend and repayment of capital at the time of winding up of the company. Equity shares are also known as ordinary shares. 2. Every company must issue equity shares. Therefore, it is the fundamental source of financing for a joint stock company. 3. Equity shareholders bear the ultimate risk associated with the ownership because they are the last or residual claimants in the case of winding up of the company. When the company is closed down, they are entitled to the funds remaining after paying all other investors. 4. The rate of dividend on equity shares depends upon the profits of the company. If there is less profit, lesser dividend will be paid, and if there is no profit, no dividend will be payable to equity shareholders. However, if the company performs well, they enjoy greater financial returns. Therefore, equity share capital is also known as risk capital or real capital. It is also called as venture capital. 5. Equity shareholders are invited to attend the general meetings of the company and are allowed to vote on all matters at such meetings. Equity shareholders participate in the management by electing their representatives, namely directors, to manage the company. They can also remove directors through exercising voting power. Thus, the real owners of the company are equity shareholders. 6. They get the benefits of right shares, bonus shares, and capital appreciation in the market value of their shares on the stock exchange. 7. Thus, equity shareholders are real owners and controllers of company. 2. Preference shares do not carry any voting right. Answer 1. Preference shares are those shares which enjoy preferential rights as to payment of dividend during the lifetime of company and return of capital in the event of winding up of company. 2. The dividend payable to preference shareholders is fixed at the time of issue and they have a priority over equity shareholders to receive the dividend. 3. Preference shareholders are cautious investors who are satisfied with low but regular income by way of dividend. 4. The preference shareholders are co-owners of the company along with equity shareholders. But, they do not carry any voting power. 5. They can vote only on those matters which affect their interest such as changing rights of preference shares, selling of undertaking, reducing their rate of dividend, etc. 6. Equity shareholders enjoy normal voting rights as they can vote on all matters in the general meetings as they are the real owners of the company. 7. Thus, preference shareholders do not enjoy normal voting rights. 3. The debentures are secured by charge on assets of the company. Answer 1. If a company needs funds for extension and development purpose without increasing its share capital, it can borrow from the general public by issuing certificates for a fixed period of time and at a fixed rate of interest. Such a loan certificate is called a debenture. 2. Capital raised by issuing debentures is a borrowed or creditorship capital. The holder of a debenture certificate is known as a debenture holder and he is a creditor of the company. 3. Section 230 of the Companies Act 2013 only states that the word debenture includes debenture stock, bonds and any other instrument of a company evidencing a debt whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not. 4. Under this definition, debenture means a document which either creates or acknowledges debt.
the definition further states that debenture may constitute a charge on some assets of the company but there may be a debenture without such a charge however now the issue of unsecured debentures is prohibited by the government 5 as debenture is a loan it is required to be secured by charge on the assets of the company so as to protect and safeguard the interest of debenture holders 6 this charge on assets may be a fixed charge that is on a particular asset of the company or floating charge that is on all the assets of the company 7 company has to appoint debenture trustees if it is offering debentures to more than 500 people and has to execute a debenture trust deed with them the debentures are secured through debenture trust deed 8 thus the debentures are secured by a charge on the assets of the company 4 retained earnings is simple and cheapest method of raising finance answer 1 retained earnings is that portion of a company's net profits which is kept or retained in the business as reserve fund and not distributed to the shareholders as dividend 2 earnings of a business organization are subject to variation due to competition etc therefore if a company earns high profit in a year it would be wise to keep aside a part of such earnings in the form of reserves these reserves are retained earnings of the company and get accumulated over the years 3 retained profits are an important and attractive source of internal financing for most profitable businesses 4 retained profits are a very cheap form of finance in cash terms retained profits are free to the business there is no interest to be paid 5 retained earnings are under the control of the business the management can convert retained earnings into permanent share capital by issuing bonus shares to existing equity shareholders this process of capitalization of profits by issue of bonus shares is called as plowing back of profits or self-financing 6 thus retained earnings is simple and cheapest method of raising finance 5 public deposit is good source of short-term financing answer 1 other than issue of shares there are various other sources of raising finance for a company such as debentures bonds loans from banks accepting deposits from public etc usually company uses public deposits for raising a small part of the total debt for a short period of time Two, the term public deposit means any money received by a non-banking company by way of deposit or loan from the public including the employees customer and shareholders of the company other than in the form of shares and debentures 3 public deposit is an important source of short-term financing for a company under this method company invites general public to deposit their savings for varied period deposits are either secured or unsecured loans offered by public to the company 4 companies can receive public deposits for different periods ranging from 6 months to 36 months rates of interest offered by companies on deposits are higher than those offered by banks 5 the amount collected through public deposits is normally used by the company to meet its short-term financial requirement 6 in view of the above public deposit is not a permanent or long-term source of raising capital but is a good source of short-term financing 6 bondholder is creditor of the company answer 1 according to webster dictionary a bond is an interest bearing certificate issued by the government or business firm promising to pay the holder a specific sum at a specified date 2 a bond is a loan and therefore bondholders are creditors of the company all bonds have maturity date and carry fixed rate of interest
the interest is payable at fixed interval or on maturity of bonds. 3. Thus, a bond is a contract to repay the borrowed money with interest and the holder of bond is a lender of the institution and gets fixed rate of interest. 4. Interest payable on bond is an item of direct expenditure of the company and is a charge against profit. This means, interest on bonds is a compulsory payment, irrespective of whether the company earns profit or not. 5. As the bondholders are creditors of the company, they do not have any right to attend general meetings. Hence, they cannot participate in the management of the company through voting. 6. Thus, a bond is a debt instrument in which the bondholder gives money to a company as loan for a definite period against payment of interest. Hence, bondholder is a creditor of the company. 7. Trade credit is not cash loan. Answer. 1. A trade credit is an arrangement where a customer can purchase goods on account without paying cash, paying the supplier at a later date. 2. Trade credit is a helpful tool for growing businesses when favorable terms are agreed with a supplier. 3. Manufacturers, wholesalers, and suppliers of goods or raw materials act as trade creditors for other business organizations. They extend credit to increase their sales and also because of custom that has been followed over time. 4. Trade credit is not a cash loan. It can be obtained without signing any debt instrument. Therefore, it is granted to those customers who have reasonable amount of financial standing and goodwill. Small retailers rely on trade credit from their suppliers to a great extent. 5. The terms of credit are not rigid. Suppliers may allow 30 days or more for payment of bill and may offer discount in bills if the same are settled within a short period, say 10 or 15 days. 6. Thus, trade credit is a cost-free source of finance and is readily available from manufacturers, wholesalers, or suppliers if goods are purchased in bulk. 7. Therefore, trade credit is not cash loan. 8. Different investors have different preferences. Answer. 1. An investor means any person or other entity who invests money in the securities of an enterprise with the expectation of receiving financial returns in the form of dividend or interest. 2. The securities include shares, debentures, bonds, fixed deposit receipts, etc. These securities are issued to investors with different needs and risk attitudes. 3. The preferences of investors differ from person to person as each investor behaves differently during the investment. Individuals invest in various securities hoping to generate high returns over a period of time. 4. There is direct relationship between the risk undertaken in investment and its returns in the form of dividend or interest. Higher the risk, more will be the returns and vice versa. 5. The investors who are ready to take risk prefer to invest in equity shares. Equity shares are subject to higher risk because of fluctuating rate of dividend and lack of guarantee of refund of capital. However, the market value of equity shares increases with the prosperity of company. This leads to increase in shareholders' wealth. 6. The investors who are cautious and interested in steady return invest in preference shares. These shares are subject to less risk because of fixed rate of dividend and preferential right with regard to payment of dividend and repayment of capital. However, there is no capital appreciation as market value of preference shares does not fluctuate. 7. Investors also have options to invest their money in debentures and public deposits. Interest at fixed rate is paid on debentures and public deposits irrespective of whether the company makes profit or incurs loss. Further, 
debentures are usually secured by a fixed or floating charge on the assets of the company. 8. Thus, different investors have different investment preferences. 9. Equity share capital is risk capital. Answer 1. Equity shares are those shares which do not have any preferential right in regard to payment of dividend and repayment of capital at the time of winding up of the company. 2. Equity shareholders bear the ultimate risk associated with the ownership because they are the last or residual claimants in the case of winding up of the company. 3. In the event of winding up, they are the last to be paid off after settling the claims of creditors and other external liabilities. In case the funds are insufficient to pay off external liabilities, equity shareholders are not paid off anything, instead the uncalled amount may be called up from them. 4. The rate of dividend on equity shares depends upon the profits of the company. If there is less profit, lesser dividend will be paid, and if there is no profit, no dividend will be payable to equity shareholders. 5. If the company performs well, they enjoy greater financial returns. If the company suffers heavy losses, the risk mainly falls on equity shareholders. Therefore, equity share capital is also known as risk capital or venture capital. 6. Equity shares have the risk of fluctuating market values of shares. If the company suffers losses, it may reduce the rate of dividend or may not even pay dividend to equity shareholders. This results in fall in the market value of equity shares because of which equity shareholders suffer capital loss. 7. Thus, investment in equity shares is very risky and it is rightly called as the risk capital.